This is the Rock and Roll Autopsy Podcast. All right, I'm going to zap her again. Charge up the paddles. Come on, let's go, let's go. Sorry, don't. Hold the compressions. Clear. Straight line. Good evening and welcome to Rock and Roll Autopsy. We are the forensic files on your radio dial. My name is Scott. And have we got a great show for you tonight? No, we don't. Damn it. The phone is ringing again. It's the request line. (sighs) All right, let's pick it up. WRNRA, East of the Rockies. Hey, breather, what's going on, man? You think award shows are nothing more than self-congratulatory circle jerks? Unimaginative programming and lazy, recycled, audience-insulting content filler? Well, tune out, tough guy. It's the second annual Rock and Roll Autopsy Potties. Welcome to the second annual Rock and Roll Autopsy Potties. The fuck? Fuck you! All right, buckle up, gang. Tonight, we take a look back at some of the best and worst episodes of 2023. We'll get the show started after these very important messages from our sponsors. What's up, music nerds? Are you tired of wading through a sea of mediocre music, desperately seeking to find a glimmer of greatness? You're in luck. My name is Mark, and I am the host of the podcast, Songs That Don't Suck. Each week, I scour the depths of new music playlists to unearth hidden gems that defy the trends and deliver pure sonic bliss. No matter the genre, if it doesn't suck, it's on my radar. So find us on your favorite podcast platform and subscribe today. And as always, keep searching for and listening to Songs That Don't Suck. All right, gang, welcome to the 2023 Rock and Roll Autopsy Awards Ceremony, The Potties, where we recognize the best and worst rock and roll autopsy episodes of the past year. Rico, how are you, man? Man, this is a special night, dude. This is this is uh, the time where we get to reflect on all that we've done over the past 12 months and how we've made it this far and still actually have a podcast. Oh my gosh, we get to celebrate <laughs> our our best episodes and poke a little yes. fun at ourselves over the shitty ones. Oh man, this is going to be spectacular. Right? This is our second annual Oh my god. So gosh. this is number 2. Man, we only have what? 85 more of these to go, right? <laughs> we'll be like the Stones. We'll we'll be trotting our asses on this fucking mic when we're like 85 years old. Do it. And now we have the 84th annual potties. Wait, I got to go to the potty. Well, listen, it's it's hard to believe that we have yeah. uh bad episodes, but we have had a few clunkers and tonight's the night where we recognize them, we call them out, we identify our biggest mistakes. It's the only way you can ever learn and move forward. Uh, You just have to own it. But conversely, we'll also take some time to pat ourselves on the back a little bit here, Rico, and celebrate what we thought were our greatest accomplishments over the last year. Well, let's not waste any more time. Do you want to go ahead and take the first one, sir? So in the category, this is in one of the bad, this is one of the baddies. So the potty for the worst episode that doubled as a lame, half-witted attempt 
to capitalize on a semi-celebrity Twitter X follow goes to envelope please episode 66 nancy sinatra these boots were made for walking episodes scott congratulations oh congratulations nancy so a <laughs> little bit of background here we uh back when i think it was still twitter at the time we were always yeah. monitoring our uh twitter follows and we noticed that we had a follow from nancy sinatra and so like the category states in a half-witted attempt to capitalize on this exciting follow from a celebrity we thought why not try to get their attention by doing a nancy sinatra episode yeah nancy sinatra is like 100 years old i'm sure her grandkids probably run her twitter account no one noticed and who cares about us doing an autopsy on these boots were made for walking rico what were we thinking yeah i'm well i you know i've never gotten to the bottom of this uh in in all of this time so tell me because i've always wanted to know did you follow her first and then they followed back or did we mysteriously get a follow from them first I'm pretty sure I probably followed Nancy Sinatra and she might be one of those, whoever handles her account probably just does that polite follow back thing. That's what I'm thinking too. Which is something I did forever on Twitter until I got to like 4,000 and then Elon wouldn't let me do it anymore. So I had to stop. Yeah. Basically yeah. they, yeah. they changed the way they do things now. And so I couldn't follow anybody back anymore. So I think Elon thought I was spam. So he made me, uh, made me knock it yeah. off, but we did this episode. I guess the episode was okay. I, I couldn't bring myself to listen to it again, to review it, you know, but you know, I did though. See, and here's, here's the funny part about this. I went back and listened to it just to kind of get my, you know, foundation for, for this. And, surprisingly enough when i went back and listened to it the um i honestly i i kind of cooked up the nancy sinatra episode because i thought wow dude i didn't know that you had followed her first because like sometimes we don't touch base on stuff like that which is fine um but I'm like, oh, cool, dude. Nancy Sinatra followed us. We should do these boots were made for walking as kind of like a wink, wink to Nancy for following us. Wouldn't that be the baddest thing ever? That's the only reason. Listen, the reality is it's a cool song. I like the song. I wasn't lying on the episode when I said I liked the song, but the reality is that song probably would never have made our list ever <laughs> in seven in 17 years. It would probably never make the list, but I did it anyways, because I got all, I got all into Nancy following us, but you know what, Scott, look, going back and listening to the episode, that song actually belongs on this podcast because like I said, dude, first girl power song it actually had this rockabilly thing that we could talk about there were actual believe it or not talking points that were valid in this song that wound up validating it being on the podcast so although it was a lame fucking grab at the beginning it actually wound up being not so out of the realm i suppose but unfortunately to get back to the crux of the biscuit here as to why it's a failure, it underscores just how lost we are as podcasters, where we somehow think that Nancy Sinatra, who is a semi-has-been celebrity, somehow holds the key to unlock podcast success, if only I she know. would notice us. <laughs> I'm sure one of her grandkids did it as a prank to her. Yeah, watch Nancy Sinatra's following this lame ass rock pod. Wouldn't that be hilarious? I'm sure that's what it was. So yeah, our our uh, our search for podcast fame is hinging on Nancy Sinatra's follow. If you can believe that, you see the connection. <laughs> It ain't going to work. Let's move <laughs> on. Let's do another yeah. one in the worst of category. Let's just stay there. Sounds good. The potty for the worst episode in which our fearless host, in spite of having done the same episode 90 previous times, inexplicably 
forget their own proprietary scientific formula goes to the envelope, please. Episode 93. Did the prodigies smack my bitch up pill rock and roll? So apparently when we, you know, before we start our autopsies, you put out the disclaimer. You know, this is very complicated science. And sometimes I tell funny anecdotes about what happens if you try our science, like when I shattered my ankle or I have I have one saved up for maybe next time when we do that bit. But the point is, we discuss how we're the only ones that should be doing this very complicated science because we're the only (laughs) ones that can do it. And we fuck our own science up. <laughs> and it did. And it and this, guess what, Scott? This is episode 93. And it took us all the way. And we'll get to this one. It took us all the way to episode 100. It took us seven more episodes and another person to clarify it for us. Because for, for seven full episodes, we still didn't get it. We still didn't know. And we wound up having a little semi-text battle about this that... <laughs> That, that Mark from Songs That Don't Suck had to settle on episode 100. So we yeah. had to have an outside force correct us on the science that we say that nobody else can do but us. I'm stunned on this one. In our defense, I think that when you're doing these podcasts, you're kind of in the moment. And uh, yeah, true. And, you know, you're not, you're not. I don't know, man. By the goddamn, sometimes the podcasts are so windy, twisty, turvy that by the time we get to the actual where we're adding up scores, we're already, you know, 60 minutes into the thing. And I don't even know which end is up anymore. So um, I'm trying to make a lame defense of how that could slip our mind. But I thought in the back of my mind, I thought, isn't it seven? And, and I think I asked you at one point and you were like, no, nah, man. And, and then I was like, okay, it's I just like, went with it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, it's eight. You're like, no, it's seven. And then eventually by episode 100, like the day of episode 100, we got into that little text argument about which one it really is. And you gave me all caps and like exclamation point. And they were like, we got to settle this Mark, help us out, man. <laughs> but no, here, 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 here's a lame excuse. You see, you know how like rock and roll, like, like why computers ruin rock and roll because they make it too perfect. Right. Like, right. like garage. And so rock is better when it's a little sloppy. Right. That's why everybody likes Jimmy page. My sister calls him the king of slop because he's sloppy. And that's why everybody loves ACE freely because he's all over the place. So that's why our rock and roll podcast is rock and fucking roll, man, because our science is sloppy sometimes like Jimmy Page, and that's what makes it so tasty. Yeah, no one's ever going to accuse us of being buttoned up and perfect. Um, yeah, we're def- it's definitely not AI <laughs> doing the podcast, that's for sure. I think that much is pretty clear, I hope. Goodness, right. do you want to go on to the next one, sir? Yeah. Okay, so... For the potty, this is the potty for the worst episode in which one host experiences a visceral, gut-wrenching hatred for the song and artist in question, while the other finds it suitable as a soundtrack for holiday shopping because, fuck it, it's Christmas, right? The envelope, please. Yeah, episode 95, did Merciful Fates Nuns Have No Fun kill rock and roll? Yeah. And, and let me clarify, let me just go a little bit further on this. It wasn't necessarily merciful fate in general, because there are a few things that I didn't mind. But this song, dude, was a, a fucking joke, dude. And his lame attempt at the the high 80s falsetto Barry Gibbs shit was was terrible, dude. You get go ahead. Take it away on this. One. Well, I like Merciful Fate, and so I, but I was not surprised every once in a while, pull the curtain back, but every once in a while when doing the podcast, I, I get worried if I, I don't want to torture Rico. Rico's a great partner on the show, and my intent is not to 
torture him with music that I know he's going to hate. I picked it because of the freaking chorus that says, see you next Tuesday over and over again. <laughs> so it was a perfect candidate for this podcast. But I, so my intent is never to like pick a song like, oh, I know Rico will just hate this. And Rico often surprises me with his musical taste anyway. He likes a lot of stuff that, you know, I have a hard time listening to. Like Rico's a big Meshuggah fan and I I can't get past the vocal. But um, but this is an instance where Rico can't get past the vocal because so maybe it's, you know, you know, uh, six and one half dozen of another. Right. But. I guess so the intent is never to torture Rico, but a part of me does worry sometimes when I pick songs and I'm like, and and we both pick songs, but sometimes I'll pick something that's a little a little out there, or maybe I something I know he doesn't traditionally listen to, and I'm thinking, oh man, am I just gonna make his life miserable? And prior to this, I think it would be safe to say, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the one you hated the most after this, the episode that was the hardest for you to do, was probably Home Sweet Home, Motley Crue, right? Because you had to listen to Theater of Pain. I mean, <laughs> I, I'll be honest with you, like get, getting through getting through the Theater of Pain was probably worse than when I had a root canal before I got like three days before I got married theater of pain, man, merciful fate is like fucking perennial Grammy or Grammy winners compared to how terrible merciful or uh, house of pain is. But, um, or, but, but let me, let me say this. You, you worry about, um, you worry about torturing me with unusual song choices, but to me, like music, in general is kind of like baked goods right to bring in another food reference so i in general love all baked goods but there are some baked goods that i'm just not a big fan of but that doesn't mean i don't like baked goods and that doesn't mean i'm not willing to power through it to you know what i mean so there's yes, some yeah. things like rhubarb pie I don't really like rhubarb pie, but I'll power through it if I have to, because I can always find some redeeming value in it. Fuck, it's a baked good. So it in general it, it inherently has value. That doesn't mean I'm gonna love it, but it's a baked good. So I so I'll, there there is value there. So even though I hated this song, I still found some value in exploring merciful fate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it. And you're super open-minded when it comes to music. So I never really, but then I guess that's also part of the reason why I was a little like, surprised when you came at this song as hard as you did, because you were like, fuck, I hated this song. <laughs> <laughs> and it had, I mean, <laughs> it had nothing to do with the lyrics, by the way. You didn't object to that. It was his no. singing that you found just absolutely unlistenable. Yeah, I mean, musically, I get it because um, it was their EP and it's the, the first thing that they really ever put out, right? Yeah. And it, I even said, like, on the other, I can't remember the other album that it wound up on that I listened to, or, or no, when I listened to Melissa, or the album that Melissa's on, is that the name of the album, Melissa? Their first album was Melissa, but basically it's confusing because this came out on the Nuns Have No Fun EP, and then later that was re-released as like a they re-released the EP with other lost tracks as a compilation oh, album right. called the beginning. That's right. Okay. So I listened to the album, Melissa, and I also listened to the album that that song wound up back on. So I listened right. to two merciful fate albums and honestly, the music part of it is not, I didn't have a problem with the music. I didn't have a problem with the lyrics. Now this song is super sloppy because it's like new for them and they hadn't really found themselves yet. But dude, the vocals. Looking for a good rock and roll book? Do you watch a ton of rock and roll documentaries like I do? Well, that's why I started the Rock Talk Studio podcast. To be the place to go for previews, reviews, and recommendations of rock and roll books, documentaries, and movies. Every first Tuesday of the month, the Rock Talk Studio gets you caught up on all the latest and points out where to go for the good stuff. Give me 20 minutes and I'll get you caught up on the world of rock and roll books, docs, and movies from every possible angle and leave you with a no doubt decision on where to spend your time and money. Fan or just casual fan, or maybe you're on the fence and just looking for something new to check out. Either way, I got you covered. Recently on the show, I've talked about books and documentaries from everyone and everything from David Bowie, Randy Rhodes, and the Allman Brothers, to the Abbey Road Studios, Cheap Trick, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Little Richard, and more. Join me, Big Rick, every Tuesday of the month 
as I host the Rock Talk Studio podcast, the ultimate review of rock and roll books, documentaries, and movies. Our Mind on Music is a podcast that covers all things music. We cover all genres and we welcome all perspectives from musicians, producers, and content creators to music enthusiasts. We have discussions, interviews, opinions, and much, much more. We hope you'll join us every week. Our Mind on Music on YouTube and all streaming platforms. You are listening to the Rock and Roll Autopsy Podcast. Let's talk about some things that we might have done well over the last okay. year and move into the best categories. Our first award in the best category, the potty for the best episode featuring pretentious elderly grumblings and unnecessary tinkering of previously untouchable classic material goes to the envelope, please. Episode 96, Dark Side of the Moon Redux Review. Yeah, um, I, I have to bring in the Brit on this one, Scott. Um, I, I've mentioned the Brit before. He's a, he's a, a, a guy that I work with. Um, he just turned 64 this year, so he grew up in the 70s like during all of this like when dark side came out he's a gigantic led zeppelin fan he's got the he's got the the jpj symbol tattooed on his arm and he plays bass in a band and so um he's really into this stuff and um when i when we first discussed then i talked about this but i'll try to make this short but the reason why i bring him up is he was super against this album like really like he was pissed when he found out that roger waters was doing this and then when i told him we, we were doing an episode on this then it then he he's uh generously listened to two our episodes in the past and um he said i'm gonna listen to your episode i want to hear what you have to say and li and he told me scott and i will reiterate that not not only did listening to us convince him to give the album a shot but he now loves it and he's glad Roger Waters did it. And remember his brother lives next door to Claire Torrey and he knows Claire Torrey. And he said that he was going to email her about our episode to see if she would listen to it. That's how much. And he said that this was the best podcast episode that he's ever listened to. He honestly, honestly likes the record because we, because of our episode. Wow. So we we uh we made him look at it a little differently, I guess. I yeah. was just happy with it because I th I thought that we usually were doing a lot of like you know poop, pee, and fart jokes, talking a lot about you know Vince Neil's boiler and you know uh, Jackie <laughs> Lawless's cod piece, you know. So we we typically aren't exactly doing you know intellectual material, but I felt pretty good about that one because we were able to tackle you know an album that was kind of serious and you know there's there's a couple funny humorous moments in the episode but we were still we were able to comport ourselves a little more respectfully than we uh than we typically do and and honestly i didn't know we had it in us right and uh on the heels of our um other attempt at discussing roger waters which didn't go quite as well in my opinion um we certainly made up for it in this episode in my i think we both agree on that one yeah, actually, it's funny because you're referencing the In the Flesh episode, which, quote, won a potty last year for worst mm -hmm. episode of 2022. So <laughs> yeah. go back and listen to that one if you want to hear us stammer and stutter and have a uh, have a long protracted debate about uh, what it means to be a fan and an audience versus a performer. I forget, but boy, it was it was uh, we it took was, a it was rough. <laughs> yeah, it was rough. We took a circuitous route to arrive at nothing, basically. So yeah, exactly. So um, yeah, great episode. I was really happy with it. Um, I'm super glad that I, I I still go back to that album. It's fucking amazing. Um, all right. So uh, the potty for the best episode designed to give our fearless hosts a break from the mind-numbing repetition of performing countless consecutive autopsies goes to the envelope, please. 
the reanimator series episode 70 which you did which was the use your load featuring guns and roses and metallica episode 86 which is the one i did roll the bunnies featuring two different rush albums scott congratulations thank you um and th and congratulations to you sir i think the idea behind this is every once in a while life intervenes and rico and i aren't able to come together for that week someone's sick you got a family obligation vacation what have you and so typically one of us will just say ah we'll handle it for that week and and we've done some things in the past like i think one time i did an album review or something and and you talked about you know drummers once and you know and i came up with this idea for basically i always thought that the load albums and the use your illusion albums were unnecessarily bloated and i thought wouldn't it be kind of fun to kind of squish them together and make one good record well you really like that idea and then you came up with the idea of well, let's give it a name and call this like an official side series let's call it you called you came up with the name rock and roll reanimators which i loved i thought was great and so it was kind of playing off of this uh you know hp lovecraft reanimator thing if anybody remembers that movie from uh from back in the day with the barbara crampton and the guy lopping heads off and bringing people back to life but um but I digress. So Rico's like, well, let's run with this. And you're like, I've already got one in mind. And so what it basically gave us was a nice side episode formula that's kind of fun, kind of creative, and very different from what we typically do with these autopsies. And it just, it, we have to take, we can't, the autopsies are great, but every once in a while, we have to do something different. And like I said, every once in a while, we have to do solo episodes just to make sure we have something going up that week. And it's just a nice, uh, it's a good idea. It worked. I thought the episodes were really well received and I enjoyed doing mine and I think you enjoyed doing yours. For sure. And I have to say when, when, I, when I, uh, I found out that you were doing that and then I listened to it and, and it, I had honestly, I don't know where where you were inspired to do this from, but I had never heard anybody or any any other avenue do something like this, and it's completely original. And I thought it was a super fucking great idea, um, and I had to piggyback off of it because I thought it was such a cool idea. I'd never heard anything like that before. So really, this one this one is is totally on you because it was such an out of the box cool idea that i just had to jump on i just i thought it was pretty amazing yeah and it gives you another way to repackage it too because we turned them into spotify playlists and like to your point with your episode is you took two rush albums that are kind of from the same era of the band in fact i think they released them back to back and you were like, you know, these weren't really well received. And so is there a way I can take this material from these two records and kind of squish them together and, and, you know, resequence them to make, is there enough material between these two records to make a stronger single record? I think is the goal, right? Yep. And yep. so you took two kind of down moments in the rush catalog and did that. And then I took two totally different bands that, but what they had in common was they had both released super bloated double albums that needed paring down anyway. So I thought, well, let's just, these things are so thin and bloated. Let's just squish them together into <laughs> one. So can something, can something be thin and bloated at the same time? Yes. These two albums, apparently. Yeah. Thin on good material, <laughs> bloated on bad right, material. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right so yeah man i uh congrats this was that was a really great idea yeah i mean i haven't uh truth be told i think you've got other ideas for future ones in the can i have not um but dear listener you will be hearing more from the rock and roll reanimator series in the future um for sure let's move on to our yeah. final potty category of the night and that is the potty for the best episode in which our heroes tackle tough material, celebrate a centennial, and create a rock podcast multiverse goes to the envelope, please. Episode 100 Did the Rolling Stones Brown Sugar Kill Rock and Roll? Yeah, man, uh, that was a, a big, a big uh, uh, landmark moment for us. It was episode 100, and uh, 
we had our good friend Mark from the songs that don't suck on with us. Um, he was nice enough to um, remind us about our science uh, and, and how the scores actually are supposed to work, which was cool on him. Thanks, Mark. I know you're listening. <laughs> um, and yeah, brown sugar was uh, brown sugar. Sir is a spicy song. And I think we, uh, we uh, between the three of us, I think we did a great job with that. And we were able to have our first guest um that actually did an autopsy with us. I mean, we've had some people on before, but Mark was our, our first guest clinician. Um, yep. and I think he did a great job. So. Yeah. I loved when I listened back to it. Well, a couple things for one, we, we let Mark pick the song and we had Brown, we have a master list that we keep adding to and editing of few. We have episodes planned for the next 400 years, but, um, our avatars will be doing rock and roll autopsy episodes in the future, <laughs> Rico. But but we had it on the list, and it was a song I was afraid of doing because it's got, you know, racial stuff. And I was like, and I thought, man, are we even like sophisticated enough to tackle this material? I mean, I had some genuine concern about it just because, you know, it's just touchy stuff, man. And you just don't yeah. want to say something dumb that you're I mean, well. You don't want to say something dumb that you're putting out in the world, but honestly, we do that every week anyway, but you yeah. don't want to say anything that hurts anybody that you put out into the world. Let's say that, but at least inadvertently. So I was, I had some trepidation about doing the song, but we let Mark pick it and that's what he brought. And I was like, okay, then we're, we're doing it, man. And, um, and I was so pleased with how well it went and, you know, we had talked a few weeks leading up to it. We were like, you know, we got this hundred coming up and we got to acknowledge it somehow. We kicked around a few ideas and Mark has been one of our most engaged listeners. And what I like about him is that he's our age and he's local. He lives in our neck of the woods. And so that's kind of distinguishes him from anybody else. He reaches out to us about the show. And so we were just like, let's ask him to come on. And he's got a great podcast too. And he's in the, he's doing definitely about rock music and well, music in general, he's more broad than rock, but he's, he's in the same music space as we are. So it just felt like it fit. And I loved the sound of it with the three of us on the mic doing an autopsy. I thought it just the, the other voice, it just added a nice dynamic. I thought every, I thought there was, you know, enough chemistry there. I thought it worked really well. I was happy with it. So yep. I just thought the episode was a success and I was happy we were able to get to a hundred episodes and I was happy we were able to kind of do something special and different with it. Yep. And like we said at the beginning of that, you know, when we first started, when we first started this podcast up, you know, we had done one in the past. We talked about that already. And, you know, we first started doing this, man, we, I had no idea what was going to happen and neither did you. And I had no idea we were going to make it to a hundred episodes and like, here we are. And so I thought that that's a, that was a big moment for us. And I think we did it justice on that episode for sure. Yeah, it was, it was good stuff, man. Um, you know, it's funny because it's, it's like this thing just keeps rolling and, um, and it's, I feel like when I said in the, um, in the category, the multiverse, <laughs> you know, we're talking to more and more people on threads and online, other podcasters in the music space as the rock talk studio guy who chats at us once in a while i think we run mm -hmm. his ad in the middle of the show and if, you yep. know the our minds on music people are talking to us and so it's like we're meeting more and more people in this music space and everybody's been super supportive and everybody's been kind it's it's pretty cool you know that we're making some nice connections and i do kind of see you know a multiverse um um hopefully uh growing here it will be like the uh, rock and roll podcast avengers if you will um, dude that'd be cool that'd be sweet can i be the scarlet witch hey now i don't know what that is what's the scarlet witch she's a badass she's like the most one of the most powerful avengers and is she's that, a hottie too is that scarlet johansson um no that's um um uh mary kate and ashley's older sister i can't remember her freaking name now uh shit that's oh, shit's not one of name. the another olsen she's, she's one of the olsons yeah i can't believe i can't remember her name she's like the most famous one of the three of them right now dude um, because because of that so I do you remember it. back in the early days of the internet when there was the olsen twin countdown clock 
God, there was everything, dude. There was Olsen VHSs and Olsen's... Oh, my God. But there do you remember? Time. No, Rico. I don't remember. I don't remember the clock. I'm dancing around it because I don't remember the clock. So Let help me, me help here. you out. The, the yeah. countdown clock, it was counting down. This is something that would never happen in a post-Me Too era. This count, it was a countdown clock on the internet that was counting down to their 18th birthday. Oh my God. Are you serious? I'm dead serious for the fucking where, Olsen twins. Where the hell was I during this? What <laughs> year was it? Do you remember what year this was? I, I don't know. I don't know what year they turned 18, but there were enough perverted dudes out there who had the hots for the Olsen twins when they were under age that someone oh God. for a long ass time had a website that was a countdown clock to their 18th birthday. So oh my God. that would never fly nowadays. No. And there, it's, there, it's a good oh, thing it wouldn't fly nowadays, but yeah, t totally. Oh my god, I'm I'm sorry I missed that. You are a fast mover. Please have a seat right there. Can I bring up a yeah. bonus uh, thought here? I I came across some notes when I was poking around in our Google Drive folder to put this together, and I yeah. saw that there was just a word document with no name on it. It was untitled. And I'm like, all right, well, let's open this up, and it just oh, said boy. it just said bonus fail in it and i'm like i don't remember who did this but what i'll read it to you this could have been another in the bad category but it just okay. said are you ready mm, interest yeah interest i'm you i'm waiting with bated breath here all right so this is our bonus uh potty award here okay rico the note said in the untitled word document on our google drive <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait to hear this. It said Rico gave Huey Lewis a zero for whiteness, not knowing about blue eyed soul. <laughs> yeah, and needs, I... and needs to downgrade the score from three to four. Rico owes full capitulation. Heart of rock and roll episode 57. <laughs> you know, that episode that episode is probably one of our best episodes and i i have to own it man like i failed on that one because i didn't know what blue eyed soul was if you can fucking believe that i think i, I had i had heard have it to before. downgrade the score i think i had heard of it before but it didn't i didn't know what it was until i i, I wasn't reminded of it until i went a read a uh wiki entry and then i was like oh shit we can't score that as zero for whiteness they're literally categorizing the music as blue-eyed soul jesus god <laughs> was that was that whiteness or was it culture vulturism i don't remember <laughs> i guess it could qualify for either one but either. i think that's i think though Ugh. you can't score it as zero for whiteness if they're literally but yeah to your point that's no, culture shit. vulturism as well I mean, does that did so? Does that how much does that change the score then? Did they, did they kill Rock? Did that I don't know. Rock guy, did that fucking song kill Rock? No, it couldn't have. We'll have to go back and listen. Oh my God, Mark, where are you? I know you've charted every one of our episodes. <laughs> and pull out your spreadsheet and help us out with this one. Um, I don't care because that song was written about cleveland it's a great song it's a great band so i don't fucking care dude because that song contributed to rock whether the science says so or not but i own that one i fucked up i didn't know what blue-eyed soul was but you know strike me down where i sit right now <laughs> All right, gang. So this has been the second annual Potties. We'll be back next week with your regularly scheduled programming. Good night now. Let me have that special rock and roll music. Yeah! Let me tell you, so the lyrics to real rock music is nothing more than satanic cyanide. Get it out of your house, throw it out, and burn it. It has no place in the house of the righteous. You guys, it was like a mistake. There's no mistake anymore.
Follow us on Twitter at RNR Autopsy, or you can send an email to rock and roll autopsy at gmail.com. And if we run across anything good, we'll mention it in a future episode. Thanks for listening. Later. Well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Before you go, if you like heavy metal and stories, then you'll love Battle of the Bands, the narrative form metal podcast that unpacks the biggest rivalries in rock and metal history. Season 1 took in Megadeth versus Metallica, and Season 2 went across the divide to explore the beef between Judas Priest and Iron Maiden. It's like Business Wars, but metal. Find Battle of the Bands wherever you listen to your podcasts, or visit battleofthebandspod.com.